Hi, my name is Roman Jean Jihashvili. I am International Grandmaster. It's Jean Jihashvili. I know it's difficult, but I'm not here to teach you how to pronounce my name. I'll teach you something much easier, how to play one very interesting opening, which we, I call myself, let's call it Roman opening. You can call it, you can put your own tag on it, so according to what your name is. So this opening is for black, D4, G6. And of course, we know that white can continue here with move E4, or much more common is C4. C4 is more common than E4 because uh, whoever plays you D4, he wants to play the closed opening, closed. So that's why they continue with D4 followed by C4, anticipating King's Indian or something like that. So after C4, Bishop G7, again, most common move is Knight C3. This is the move you should be expecting maybe 90% of the time. Other moves here are E4 or Knight F3. And again, on E4, uh, black has a variety of continuations. They can go with D6 followed by knight c6, but we cannot cover now all these continuations. We probably will cover it in parts two, three, or four. But what we want to do here, we want to go with the main move, knight c3. And now black plays c5, which automatically gives us uh, almost new opening. No matter what white does here, black has, I think, very interesting game. Very interesting and position I personally like very much. I've played it a number of times. And I had very good result, maybe 80% I scored against very good players. So let's see what white's options are here. White can play d5, the most common move, D takes C, move that I do not recommend for white. Knight F3, which gives black very comfortable position. And E3, that does not create any problems for black. Well, before we get to the main move D5, this is the main continuation for white. Uh, let's cover briefly other continuations, such as, for example, D takes C. D takes C move should not be recommended for white for few reasons. The simplest reason is bishop takes C3, pawn takes, and now black can play queen A5. And white has very weak pawn structure. If white tries to protect their extra pawn by playing queen d4, after black plays knight f6, we see that uh, white cannot hold on to this uh, extra pawn. Black plays knight c6 and has very good position. Now we go back to this position. So that will cover the continuation that is not good, DC. In other moves, black, white can play E3, on which the simplest way to play for black is knight F6. And white plays knight F3. Black can castle. 
and now we can see that if white plays d5, then we transpose to regular king's Indian, where white sooner or later will have to play e4, and then black will have regular king's Indian with an extra tempo, because white played e2, e3, and then e3 to e4. So therefore, the reasonable move is bishop e2, then black simply takes, and after retake, plays d5, getting very comfortable position. So that will briefly cover to cover move e3 also. Now our topic of this uh, lecture is mostly when in this position, when white plays knight f uh, plays d5. Now, what about knight f3 move? Also, black has very good position. After c takes d, knight takes, and now knight c6. What can white do? The knight is hanging. If white takes, black has good position after recapture, and black has good possibility to fight for center. Or if white goes knight c2, then black can play bishop takes c3, pawn takes, queen a5, attacking the pawn, and after bishop d2, black plays knight f6, f3, d6, e4, bishop e6. Now black clearly targeting c4 pawn, which after knight e5 and rook c8 will be big liability for white. Black has, in my opinion, solid advantage here. So now we go, let's, let's we go back and now we get to the main move in that position. Which is d5. But this position was uh, in a history of chess tournaments, maybe several hundred thousands of times. But move bishop takes c3 was not that many times used. And actually, I'm introducing a new idea which uh, I developed and it has brand new strategical ideas here. The main point is pawn takes bishop. Now black plays f5. Now what is the idea in this opening? White has two bishop advantage, uh, the two bishops advantage. White also, black also has weak dark squares and black does not have dark square bishop. Now what do we have for it? Nevertheless, I do recommend this opening for black. Now what do we have for it? We have two knights against two bishops. We will have to try to keep position closed where knights will be superior pieces over the bishops. So how is it gonna go? We went f5. And now white has two different basic strategies here. Strategy one, to immediately bust black's structure on king's side by playing h4 and h5 and attack here. Or even bust it in the e4 with e4 and then try to play f3. This is one basic idea, try to bust white, black on, on a king side. The other idea is the normal slow development and try to use it, these weaknesses, later in the later stage of the game. Now, let's see if white tries to put black out of business immediately by playing h4. 
this point, Black has to be very, very careful because the idea of H5 looks very dangerous and Black has to be prepared for it. Now, this is one move that is weak for Black because White is going to play Bishop H6 and the bishop that normally is supposed to be a bad bishop, that's the basic strategy for black, to make those bishops bad and to close them behind white's pawn structure. The ideal is this, to make white play this and make bishop bad. Now bishop is good. Is. So knight f6 is a wrong move. The correct way to play against h4 is d6. Now how does it stop the idea of breaking on this h file? White plays h5 and black plays queen a5. Attacking c3 pawn. And here are white's choices. White can protect the c pawn by playing either bishop d2 or queen c2 or just take on g6. Take on g6 by h takes g is very weak move. It looks good though because if black takes on c3 with a check then white plays bishop d2 and looks like black is in trouble because on queen g7 there will be exchange on h7 and white has much more superior position. Queen is misplaced. Two bishops are good. The diagonal is very strong. But the problem with this white looks weak for white because on this move Excuse me. On HG, the move for black to play is H takes G, very strong, which gives black nearly winning position. Now white has to take H file, H rook, and then black plays queen takes C3 check, and queen takes H8. Now in this position, black has an extra pawn and very good pawn structure. So black can play in the future knight d7, knight f6, and then put knight on b6 and bishop on d7. And knight has potentials to come to e4, as we will see in uh, the further chapter on the next when we see the positions where bishops are, bishop is closed. This is going to be how the black develops, knight d7, knight e4. Same idea is here, knight d7, knight e4, and then this knight, d7 knight, will come to e5 or b6. This is the option. So what, what, what we have here is queen a5 move, and now, as I said, Taking on g6 is bad because pawn takes pawn. White can play bishop d2 or queen c2. And suppose queen c2. Now black makes very strong move. Pawn takes pawn. And here, if white can retake it back immediately, then black plays knight f6. Rook h1, and now knight d7. And amazingly, we can see here that knights are better than bishops. White has no place to castle. No, White, obviously, well, let's make a few moves. Knight f3 or knight h3. Now we go knight e5. And you see this, this knight is almost untouchable. Because if black tries to play f4, which is big positional mistake. It gives up g4 square for one knight and e4 square for the other knight. So obviously this is not good. So if white tries to play knight f3, 
then we can play knight e4 and put the other knight on f6. At the same time, we're attacking c3-4. So white has a problem here. And black has very comfortable development. So when white has nowhere to castle, because castling on king's side obviously is dangerous. But castling on ki king side is dangerous. Castling on queen side, obviously you can tell, is not safe either. So what we have what we have here, white cannot castle. Black has a very good outpost for their knights, and black has castling opportunity on queen side and continue playing in its center. Maybe in the future even e6. And when it takes, or it take, and now we can break in the center. So we just covered what happens if white takes on g6. Now let's see if white plays bishop d2 or queen c2. Let's concentrate on queen c2. We take g takes h. And suppose white, instead of simple rook takes h5 and slow development, tries to uh, blow position by playing, blow black's position by playing e4. So we take. And now white may try to take on h5 with a knight by playing knight e2, knight h3, knight e2, knight f6, and knight g3. Now, as we said before, white tries to open position of black's king. Black will try to keep this position closed. Now, let's see what can black do. We're going to go knight d7. White plays knight takes h5. Black takes back. Rook takes. Knight f6. Rook goes to h6 or h1, doesn't matter. Now we play bishop d7. And next move, black is going to castle the long side. So white's attempt of opening black's position clearly failed. Now we go back. So this attempt didn't work. 